of course the pedigree for the sex linked diseases is so much easier to differentiate from the pedigree from both the autosomal dominant and recessive because only these blocky things males are involved uh, and it is really easy to differentiate it from the other two a generation skipping may happen but it doesn't matter you only have males that are involved let's talk about single gene disorders that's the easiest and classical way for us to remember uh, genetic diseases is to have perhaps a uh, a single defect producing a single abnormal protein the protein may be an enzyme a transport protein a structural protein or an enzyme defect which may increase drug susceptibility so in the classical single gene disorder you have uh, an abnormal uh, sequence of DNA producing an abnormal protein enzyme or polypeptide of a protein or enzyme and therefore it's abnormal so the enzyme doesn't work and therefore you have not only lack of your product from the enzyme but you have significant accumulation of your substrate as well and because of this uh, or, or there may be a failure to inactivate a protein which causes damage which of course is what enzymes do In another scenario you may have an abnormal transport protein in familial hypercholesterolemia there is a transport protein that is defective and therefore cholesterol can't be transported through the liver like it should be and as a result does a lot of nasty things or takes other routes which result in extensive early premature atherosclerotic blood vessel damage there are a whole wide variety of structural protein defects Marfan syndrome uh, osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Uh, in these, the structure of the gene, uh, I'm sorry, of the protein may be abnormal and therefore its function may be abnormal or it may be normal but it's produced in inadequate quantities. And the fourth possible type of scenario, uh, an enzyme a defect may be present and on the basis of this uh, parts of your body may be susceptible to things which normally they're not for example uh, in a person with G6PD deficiency it makes a cells extremely more sensitive to primaquin you know one of the anti-malarials so these are your classical uh, four scenarios for single gene disorders uh, let's talk about a couple of them. You know, Marfan syndrome is a defect of a gene which produces a defect of the protein which ultimately that gene encodes called fibrillin 1. In fact, if you took your list of all of the structural proteins in the body, I bet you there are probably defects of every one of them in many more ways than one. Marfan syndrome people are tall like Abraham Lincoln or Osama bin Laden. They frequently have dislocated lens. Uh, they often have aortic arch aneurysms. Uh, this is the classical uh, triad for Marfan syndrome people, all due to uh, fibrillin 1 defect. And another type of structural protein defect disease, uh, Ehlers-Danlos, for example, there are both autosomal and autosomal dominant and recessive forms of it. There's a whole bunch of different types, but some of the things you might expect as an expression of different uh, types of collagen defects would be uh, hypermobility of the joints, extremely elastic skin, abnormalities of uh, blood vessels, kyphoscoliosis, uh, arth arthritic changes, skin changes, various collagen defects. And even though it's a disease, you know, some of the most uh, spectacular uh, Olympic athletes in the world and their ability to do things which you don't even think are possible could very well be due to uh, having abnormal collagen 
which enables them to move their bodies in ways you could never believe. Let's take the example of a receptor protein uh, defect. For example, there is a low density lipoprotein receptor defect present in familial hypercholesterolemia. And therefore, this uh, receptor transports cholesterol to the liver normally for it to do what it does, and that's to be processed. But if the transportation is impaired, the cholesterol builds up, and as a result, your scavenger system for clearing cholesterol kicks in. In other words, your macrophages start chewing it up. So when you look at atherosclerotic plaques, uh, whether the person is uh, familial hypercholesterolemic or not, you see foamy macrophages, and now you know why they're foamy, because they're chewing up cholesterol. Uh, of course, they would be much more uh, advanced and serious and premature and uh, intense in people with uh, familial hypercholesterolemia than, you know, regular uh, people like you and me. Uh, enzyme deficiencies are by far the largest known category of genetic diseases. And like we said, you can have... Uh, substrate buildup and abnormal collections causing diseases uh, by virtue of substrate buildup or you could have lack of the product which is necessary for uh, metabolism. Uh, the substrate uh, in excess quantities could be harmful and the single most awesome large group of enzyme deficiency genetic diseases are the lysosomal storage diseases because for the most part they occur uh, in the enzymes associated with uh, lysosomes. So if you remember your chemistry, and I hope you do because I don't remember it too well myself, if you know that uh, there's something called glycogen, if you know that there's a family of uh, chemical compounds called sphingolipidoses uh, from the sphingolipids, if you know that there are sulfatides the buildup of this would be called the family of sulfatidoses. If you know there are mucopolysaccharides, so uh, if this substrate builds up due to an enzyme deficiency, you have your family of mucopolysaccharidoses. You know that there are mucolipids, and buildup of these would be the mucolipidoses, and there's actually a longer list. For example, the fucosides, the manicides, the aspartyl glycosamines can build up and be expressed in your urine as well. Uh, just for a quick um, reference, there's also a disease uh, called a Wolman disease, uh, acid phosphate uh, deficiency as well. But they all follow the pattern of you have some kind of chemical, perhaps a lipid or a carbohydrate or a protein or any combination thereof. It can't be processed, so it builds up and it causes diseases. And remember, these are all uh, autosomal uh, uh, recessive diseases. Uh, in glycogen storage disease, there's at least 10 different types. Uh, some of the classical ones, uh, the most classical of which is type 2 Pompeii disease, or you may hear the name Von Gierke or McArdle's diseases. They're the most studied. They're all different from the other ones, but the bottom line is the glycogen builds up because uh, an enzyme is missing to process that glycogen. And where would glycogen normally build up? Well, glycogen would normally build up where it normally gets stored anyway, like liver, muscle, and heart. So the various glycogen storage diseases have buildup of glycogen to the point where they almost look like they're gigantic vacuoles inside of liver cells or muscle cells. In this case, it looks like cardiac muscle that looks evacuated because of significant buildup of uh, uh, substrate of glycogen. Uh, let's talk about the sphingolipidoses, uh, the most famous of which is Tay-Sachs disease. Uh, sphingolipidoses are buildups of gangliosides, okay? They're present in uh, very high frequencies in Ashkenazi Jews. In fact, one out of 30 Ashkenazi Jews are carriers. 
So for a uh, homozygous state to be present, you could figure out what the math is. And these sphingolipids then build up in uh, places where they sh uh, could cause the most damage, like in neurons, for example. Let's uh, deal with this in the next uh, group.